Hello, my name is Maria Miller from MathMammoth.com. In this video we're gonna study the greatest common factor of two numbers. And the name really tells you what it is all about. The greatest common factor of two numbers. First you find all the factors of those two numbers. Then you find all the common factors, the num numbers that are the same. And then among those you find the greatest. Let's see an example and see how it works. What is the greatest common factor of 80 and 12? Basically, I'll make a list of factors for 80, a list of factors for 12, and then check over there which ones are common, and then choose the greatest of those. Okay, now, first of all, how do you find all the factors of a number? I'll start out with number 1, because 1 times 80 equals 80. So 1 and 80 are factors of 80. And I'll write 80 way over here, because I will now have my factors in order here as a list. Then I go to 2, 2 times, and 80 is divisible by 2, it is 2 times 40. And then I go to 3, 3 times, but it's not divisible by 3. So 4, 4 times something, it is 4 times 20. And then 5, yes it is divisible by 5, it is 5 times 16, it's not divisible by 6, nor by 7, but it is divisible by 8. 8 times 10, okay? I'm already very close. 8 and 10 are almost neighboring numbers, so I'll, all I have to check now is 9. It's not divisible by 9, so I'm done. For 12, I'll do the same. 1 and 12. Then I have 2 and 6. And then I have 3 and 4. And 3 and 4 are neighboring numbers, so I am done. And now we check which ones are the common factors or numbers in both lists. There's 1 and 2 and 4 and 6, no, 12, no. Okay, so 4 is the greatest common factor. That took some time, but sometimes we can speed up this process. For example, let's say that I want to find out the GCF of 90 and 39. I'll start first by finding the factors of 39 because it has fewer factors. Okay, it has fewer factors than 90. 39 is 1 times 39. And then it's not 2 times anything, but it is 3 times 13. And then it's not 4 times anything, or 5 times, or 6 times, or 7 times. Those are all its factors. And now, the greatest common factor of these two numbers is either 1 or 3 of 13 or 39, right? It's going to be one of those. If nothing else, 1 will be the greatest common factor of two numbers, right? So it's one of these, and so I'll just try if 1 or 3 or 13 or 39 is a factor of 90 or not. 1 is, of course, and 3 is 2. 13 is not, 39 is not. So, it must be 3. So I don't have to worry about all the possible factors of 90. It has many more factors, I know. But 3 is the GCA. Okay, here, 32 and 80. Again, let's do the same. Let's just find all the factors of one of them and then check which ones of those would be factors of 80. Or maybe you just want to do 80 first. Either way, I'll do 32. 1 and 32. 2 and 16. 3 is not. 4 and 8. 5 is not. 6 is not. 7 is not. 8 is, but 8 is already in the list. So. My list is complete. And then, which one of these are also factors of 80? 1 is, 2 is, 4 is, 8 is, 16 is, because it's 16 times 5, 32 is not. Okay, so greatest common factor is 16. Now, where can you use the greatest common factor? Actually, the main usage will be when you study algebra. It will be very much used there. But, even at this stage, when you're not yet studying algebra, you can use the greatest common factor when simplifying fractions. It is not essential to use, but you can use it. It can help. Like, for example, 12 divided by 80, or 12 over 80. I already solved what the GCF is. It's 4. So, if I write here, 12 is the same as 4 times 3, and 80 is 4 times 20. So now, when I'm simplifying the force cancel, and I'm left with 3 over 20, and it does not simplify any further. 
The best I can do when simplifying is by dividing both numbers by 4. The same here, 32 over 80. I already figured out the GCF, it's 16, okay? So then, I will divide both of these by 16. 32 divided by 16 is 2, and then 80 divided by 16 is 5. I'm all done, and I cannot simplify it any further, because I did the most simplifying I could by using the GCF to start with.